would you say with with the potency because in my mind I always think about you know we're talking about transformational now but when you said sometimes what we're doing is looking at the parent ego state that we need to be more potent than the the powerful. parental interjects so to speak much more powerful yeah yeah otherwise you repeat history for the client yeah it would just be another um object that the negative parent will swallow up yeah you need to be more powerful than that original parental interject we demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations this is the therapy show behind closed doors podcast with bob cook and jackie jones so welcome back to the next episode of the therapy show behind closed doors with the awesome mr bob cook i'm thinking a lot of different words delightful yeah, yeah. Or delicious but delicious. I, actually, I love the way you delivered awesome there i'll yeah. go with that. awesome awesome mr bob cook and what we're looking at in this episode is what is transformational in the therapy process which might lead on quite nicely from the last one yeah yeah we talked about the inner child but if we look at the word if we look at therapy therapy is all about transformation hopefully that's that's good that's where <laughs> yeah. we're heading yeah <clears throat> and when people have aha moments, which is a therapist you've been with clients many times, which is have aha moments, that is, even though it's only, you know, a second or two of a realisation or a new awareness, that's part of the transformational process in therapy. Yeah. So, you know, how can I explain this? I don't think change can happen without transformation or we'll put it another way transformation is the glue that makes the change you know it's like it's like metamorphosis uh, we move from one place to another through transformation so therapy is transformational in essence yeah yeah and you know we can't ever go backwards once once we've had a aha moment or once we become aware of certain personality traits or the reasons why we do what we do, we can't ever go back from that. So it is transformational. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely true. And yeah, a person said to me the other day, did you enjoy the career you picked? And I, I, I said back, well, I haven't quite finished yet, but I did enjoy the 38 years working with clients, groups and individual settings. And partly it's because I've helped people in this transformational process. Um, probably the most satisfying part of the job. Yeah. When you see transformation happen. Now, you must, every time you work with clients and groups, experience that in some way. Yeah. Definitely. And although when clients leave, <clears throat> it can be, you know, quite emotional and sad because it's the end of a journey. But there's also an awful lot of happiness in that, that they have, they do feel able to, you know, to leave therapy and it has been transformational for them. Yeah. And I love that word because transformation means to me a movement from one place to a much more positive place. Yeah. And, you know, whether that takes one session or 115 sessions, the impact I've played in the transformational process it gives me a lot of professional satisfaction. Definitely, yeah. And I, I can relate to that. I've had clients that, you know, stopped seeing me two, three, four years ago and you know I'm, I might still be in contact with them or whatever and they'll say I'm I'm still saying to myself what would Jackie say mm. and it's it's you know with you I have <clears throat> bought so many of your sayings that I picked up when I was doing my training that I use with my clients now and it's it's them having that little bit of you going with them which is real professional satisfaction yeah and then they will integrate uh you so correct so transformation is all about change yeah 
And therapy counseling is all about change. And for some, uh, change can be scary. For most people, change is scary. Yeah, you mentioned uh, it in the last one about letting go of something, and that can be really overwhelming for some people. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a stuck place, the only way you can make the only way that you can move forward is to let go of, yeah. of what's making you feeling stuck. You, you yeah. have to let go to move forward. Yeah. You know, Eric Byrne wrote, wrote a book in, I think it was 1969, or around that time anyway. What do you, what do you say? Yeah, it was 69. What do you say after you say hello? Yeah. Like, to move forward, you have to let go. They go together. Yeah. However, when you're in that stir, when you're in that stuck place, it can often be the most petrifying place to be in. Yeah, because I've had clients, you know, when we've been discussing this, and th they'll kind of say, "But I don't know what to do if I'm not doing this," and it's it's a scary void sometimes mm. when they let things go. Oh, even it's if it's painful and it's not serving them well, at least they know how the journey ends. Oh, so, you know, in the process, of course, that's the question which many, many therapists will ask, which is, well, what do you want to put in the place? So, yeah. you know, uh, you might do it. By the way, what you might do is with the client, you might, going back to the other podcast here, but anyway, you might do imagery work, hypnotic induction work about, or painting, if you like, or even just imagery work, what will this if you let go of x what will this new pace be like yeah but you are right in ta they they call these stuck places impasses and how do we help people move and to let go and to move forward yeah and to and of course in that process that is of course transformational work it's not straightforward because no. people are so petrified of change. Yeah. Somebody once said um, that it's kind of like when we're stuck and when we're in it, it's like we're on a train journey and we do it all the time and we know what stops the train stops at and the people that get on and we know where it, the journey is going to end and therapy is like asking you to get on another train. <laughs> where yeah. you don't necessarily know where it ends and what the stops are and who's going to be on that journey with you. I couldn't have put that better. Um, you know, when people are in the place we're talking about here, uh, they find it so hard to move, to let go of the past because their script or the way they define themselves is predictable. Yeah provides a sense of identity and it provides stability yeah so it becomes so hard to let that go yeah it's like a, like they've got to let go of their identity their sense of predictability their sense of continuity and their, maybe their sense of stability and of course how can they move into the unknown like you just and getting said quite eloquently and get on a new train where they don't know where it's going, with no yeah. sense of predictability, they don't want to have their feeling, there's no sense of continuity. So no thanks. At least I yeah. know who I am, where I am. That's it. Yeah. Even though it's painful, I know, I know how it pans out. Yeah. 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 So we'll stay where we are and we'll keep this script. At least there's a sense of predictability. There's a sense yeah. I know who I am. There's a sense of continuity and there's a sense of stability. Yeah. But the, the transformation when it does happen, yeah. I can remember in my training, there, there was like a, a, a phrase that, you know, at some point in a therapy session, you will have a bullseye where it's like the stars line up and everything just comes together. And it is that aha moment where it goes, it bypasses all the protection mechanism and everything and something just clicks for the client. Mm. Yeah, when that happens, that's such a wonderful moment yeah me and for the client yeah it will only happen in a secure safe trusting relationship 
Yeah. And often after many, many uh, weeks, months of psychotherapy, like going down the onion layers, you can't suddenly do the work we're talking about here in session one. No. Two, three, four. Yeah. And transformation can happen quite quickly as well as take a long time, dependent on the client, on the issue, on lots of things. You know, I know we, we spoke about long-term versus short-term therapy before, but I think people think with psychotherapy is always long-term. It's always, you know, 10 years of, of doing it. Yeah, you're but right. Of course, of course, that can happen very quickly. But what is also important that in their journey of transformation, we need to help them integrate these new behaviours or these new enlightenments into their lives. Yes, that's the key, I think. We can have transformation and awareness, but then we lose it again. <laughs> yeah, oh, it do. is about integrating it. Yeah, so that won't happen in one session. Well, no, happen in no. session. The genesis may happen in one session, but yeah. the ideology might be in two sessions. But I think the integration uh, takes a bit longer. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with that. Because yeah. it is new and it is different. And, you know, I, I, I can remember having conversations with clients where I know my script. It took me a long time to work out what my life script was and everything else. But I also know even now, I will dip in and dip out of it. It's not like once I had this realisation that it disappeared forever, at times of stress, I will go back. Mm -hmm. So even though I feel like it was integrated and, you know, I know when I'm in my script and when I'm not, I still go back in my script. Yeah, so you need a therapist to help you. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Uh, integrate the script and move forward. Yeah, and understand it. And I know we've said it in past podcasts, you know, life will throw us curveballs and things change. So to have the therapist with you, to practice, to play out, to experiment with the new ways of being or the new script is so important. Yeah. Mm. The thing about transformation is that we often um, have to deal with the darker sides of ourselves. Mm. that we've taken on from somewhere else usually um and ta that might be called uh, so you know the pedig estate might appear the negative toxic part so transformation isn't straightforward no and it's usually um this is in my experience it's often two steps forward sorry two steps going back to going one step forward and what i mean that by that is that psychotherapy is a process, never an event. It takes this whole process to all this. Yeah. And we often have to visit the dark sides to get, um, you know, continuity in the light side. Yeah. And that often is visiting our um, toxic abusers or going to the trauma part or dealing with uh, the parental interjects which are so negative with us. Yeah. And that's all part of, you know, I think, um, promoting transformational change in the therapy room. And, you know, really, in order to do that, we need to be our authentic self, which we're vulnerable <laughs> You know, it, it's very different, even with a, a therapist in a therapy room, to be vulnerable and to be our authentic self and allow that to come out can be really difficult, especially if we've been shamed and we've got guilt from the past. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it is it is a, a peeling back of layers yeah. in a secure place. Yeah. Without, without doubt. And I think... Uh, the use of permissions from the therapist is really important here as well. It's yeah. okay for do you to be you. It's okay for you to feel and think at the same time. It's okay for you to take these steps. Nothing dreadful is going to happen. The world won't collapse. Yeah. 
that's something I often say to clients is the sky won't fall in if you make a new decision. <laughs> Absolutely true. Because it feels like it when we are in our younger self, it does feel like the sky will fall in. That's right. And I, I think without these permissions, uh, it's uh, it's um, often um, the client will stay in stuck place. They need the uh, permissions from a potent um therapist to enable them to dare to take the risk to get on the new train yeah and that you just read my mind then because one of the things that always stuck with me and i think it's lovely is the three p's permission protection and potency and mm. that is what leads to transformation without a doubt yeah yeah you know potency of the therapist yeah and uh, that means involving themselves having a really impactful uh, sense of curiosity yeah um being on the th being on the client's side that's what all these potent things um would you say with with the potency because in my mind i always think about you know we're talking about transformational now but when you said sometimes what we're doing is looking at the parent ego state that we need to be more potent than the the powerful. parental interjects so to speak much more powerful yeah yeah Otherwise, you repeat history for the client. Yeah. It would just be another um, object that the negative parent will swallow up. Yeah. You need to be more powerful than that original parental interject. So, for, you know, so potency is very important of the yeah. third I'm talking about here. Permissions, really important to help the um, client get on a new train, if you like. Yeah. You know? um, and protection is a, by, a byword for a therapist to do this type of work. Yeah. So I like the three Ps. I do. It's always stuck with me. Yeah. Mm. Potency, you know, is so important. Permissions are so important. And protection is so important as an agent of transformation, if you like. Yeah. Mm. When taught a lot in TA, that's often taught a lot in TA but it's it's a nice um, way of just remembering some of the really important aspects of our for therapists in terms of you know helping their clients in the world of transformation yeah because that's the aim is is for the the client to have you know to transform mm. And, you know, you are right. I was just thinking when you were talking, you are right. Transformation can happen with one session, two sessions, three sessions, four sessions. But I think for us to um, take the transformation forward, to anchor it and integrate it, mm. takes, a, you know, a few more sessions. So yeah. it is, in a way, long-term work. But then, you know, we have to say, well, what is long-term work? You know, what I'm talking about here, I, I think you can do transformational work in three months, but I think you're talking six months on. Yeah. Which isn't really a long time when you think about it, compared to what you've carried around for all your life. Yeah. Maybe. And again, you know, it, it, being in the therapy room is, is an opportunity for the client to explore and experiment and try out new things. <laughs> Mm. you know whether that's through role play or you know coming back the week after and feeding back how how things are different for them that's absolutely right and i was in therapy for a long time and you know i definitely wouldn't be the person i positively that i am today without you know the change and the transformation that i made from uh part of herself I didn't like to where I am today and one thing in this that doesn't mean total change no you know I would say that I still carry the essence of my spirit my you know positive humanity and different aspects of myself you know with me but I will say that I've changed uh, many of the things uh, which were so toxic and I've probably healed most of the traumatic places I carried. So that's the transformation I'm talking about. I'm not meaning 
that you, you, you know, you completely, utterly change everything about yourself because I've still got many of the essences, you know, the essence of me, I believe, um, still carries throughout me. So it isn't about, you know, totally changing everything about you. It's just about transforming from the parts which were so toxic for you and using the energy in the um, places of change, really. Uh, I think that's a really good, valid point, Bob, because, you know, it has been said to me before, and I think I even went through a phase, you know, I know we've spoken in the past about us having to have personal therapy while we're training, is mm -hmm. that I would leave my partner behind. I would be transformed. And would I want to be in this relationship if I'm not, me yeah. anymore so i think it's a really valid point when you say your essence and your spirit is still there it's not like we reinvent ourselves completely no we choose to we choose to transform ourselves from the dark side and live in the light side yeah um and that took me many years so you don't have to stay as long as me in therapy maybe it is six to nine months but i do I would make a plea for therapists to look at how clients can integrate the new behaviours in, in, in therapy and support them in that journey. Yeah. Um, because it's going to be a hard journey without the supportive therapist, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a, a safe space to come back and to discuss it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. A safe place. A yeah. regular protected time to come back and discuss your anxieties, your thoughts. And, you know, it, it takes a lot of courage, but it's really important to come back to this regular yeah. protected time to look at how you can leave your, live your life in a new way in these new behaviours. And you need somebody who will be almost like a mentor to support you through that, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree. And it can be quite anxiety-provoking when we're making change. I think it always is. Yeah. Because if we go back to predictability, a sense of who you are, a sense of continuity through time, and a sense of stability. That's all the hallmarks of your script. Yeah. You know who you are. Yeah. So to get on the new train, I think, will always inevitably... Um, carry a sense of anxiety yeah it, in the nicest yeah. possible way with, with clients when they've come back the week after we've had a really good session and said god i felt really anxious this week i've literally gone like this and they look at me and it's like that's because you're doing something different you're changing and that's the reason why you're feeling the way that you are and then obviously we we work on that yeah that's why you're feeling uncomfortable because actually you're going against your script yeah. you're going against your life plan yeah. you're going against you know uh what you've always known so it it's would be really thing. hard yeah <laughs> it'd be really odd yeah if you've got a sense of uncomfortability it'd be odd wouldn't it yeah I'm not saying it's not difficult for the client when they are making changes and feeling anxious, but for them to know that this is this is normal, this is part of the process, is is learning to be comfortable in the uncomfortable yeah. feelings That's that you're right. having. And what you're talking about here, for the people listening, is normalisation. Yeah. The word used a lot in therapeutic parlours, and that is that the therapist provides normalisation transactions to help the client know what's normal and what isn't. Yeah. So important. Yeah. Because so many clients think they're crazy or there's something wrong with them. Uh, so it's very important to help the client normalize, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. It's one of the most important aspects and duties of a therapist, I think, to help a person un understand what was so un understandable and to normalize that. Yeah, because a lot of the conversations that we have with clients aren't conversations you would have outside of the therapy room. No, so how okay. do we know what's normal and what's not? Because we wouldn't ever discuss this with anybody else. Mm. If you trace back to a person's history to where they made certain decisions that they thought were 
crazy or whatever you, ever, ever words they put on themselves, you, you, you will find that even in the most bizarre circumstances, the decisions they made were normal. Yeah. Given those set of circumstances. Yeah. And set with the best of intentions, because if we knew a better way, we would do it a different way. Oh, without dying, mostly people pick ways to survive. Yeah. And again, we should be congratulated for that because we did survive it. However, <laughs> however we got through it, we survived it if we sat in a therapy room with a therapist. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and we we're working towards transformation to a, a different, a more positive part of ourselves that's going to live in the world of lightness instead of darkness. Yeah. Which is lovely. That's that's a lovely thought. You you know that yeah, it has been dark, but it's literally going into the lightness. Whether you're a spiritual person or a religious person or not, that's what transformation is. It's a lot warmer in the light side. Yeah. We can feel the sun on our backs. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It's lovely. And it's lovely to be a part of it, like you said. It's it's an honor and a privilege sometimes to be in a therapy room. Mm. And if the client can allow themselves to feel the sun on their back, it's a wonderful, wonderful moment. Yeah. It's so real. how do we know when true transformation has happened? Oh, right. Okay, the client will tell you. That's number one. Secondly, when they, um, and this is a longer process, um, but often clients will leave the root therapy room carrying you in their heads which is normal what Eric Byrne called transfer transformational cure in other words still carried part like you said earlier on this podcast still and that's normal to carry parts of the protective therapist who's been so supportive of them you know and what but the I think the real indicator of when the totality of transformation happens is when they've integrated your words so that they have their own words. So it's a long passage. Yeah. And you can have, I think transformation has stages from the aha to new awarenesses, then to putting new behaviors into practice, then to practice that in life, then to go to, you know, out of the therapy room and they will bask in the world of what they, you know, what they allow themselves to become. Yeah. So the ha ha moment is the beginning of transformation, if you like. Some people might say, "Oh, well, no, no, that's that's when uh, there's real transformation." And I'm not. Maybe it is, but I think the actual actioning, the change, the Carrying out the new behaviours is part of an integrated process yeah. where people can enjoy and bask themselves in the light and feel the sun in a way was different and they allow themselves to have a sense of difference and know where they've come from to where they are today. I completely agree. that. That aha moment and the awareness of where they are is really important <laughs> because yeah. a lot oh. of it is out of our consciousness. We we just do what we do. I'm sure Gestalt therapists listening to this would say that the transformation is when we are <laughs> when we grasp those new awarenesses, and in some sense it is. If we're going to have the totality and follow through the actionistic part of the transformation i think there's more to it mm. but that's those are my thoughts yeah i tend to agree with you yeah it is it is a journey and it's it's a long process and it's not to say that after that aha moment the client hasn't gained something from it and you know would benefit from that but the likelihood is that they will leave the therapy room and it, if it's not integrated, if they've not gone through the process, it's easy to fall back into old behaviours. Yeah, and uh, um, that's we're talking about really important things here. 
awareness is really important new awarenesses but there has to be more mm. i think it's the integration yeah of what follows yeah and you know going back to earlier on in this it's 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 being okay with letting go of stuff yeah that's a big one <laughs> that is a really big one you know all the therapists or people thinking about what happens in the therapy room <laughs> a lot of we do a lot of what we do as therapists is helping people to let go and to take on new behaviors which are more positive and to be able to bask in the light and that's a process never an event yeah yeah but you know I've, I've had clients in the past that you know part way down this process they'll then start to beat themselves up for doing what they've done in the past why did I not know this sooner? Why did I not come to therapy sooner? Why did I not work this, this this out sooner? And they'll actually start berating themselves because it's took them so long to get to this point. So yeah. it's kind of like, right, we need to slow it down a bit now. <laughs> yeah, that's where guilt and shame often come Yeah. To. Yeah. yeah. So then we deal with all those processes uh, so they can be kind on themselves. Yeah. So like you say, it is, you know, two steps back and one step forward sometimes. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Often, but we really need to celebrate and help the clients celebrate the one step forward. Yeah, I often say as long as we're facing the right way, that can be enough sometimes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If we're not looking back, we're actually, you know, in the moment, I'm facing the right way, that can be enough. Yeah. Yes, it's, 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 it's always a process, never an event, Jackie. That's that's you in my head that I carry around. That oh. that's one of the phrases that I say a lot. And I'm not saying that my clients like hearing it. <laughs> no, no. Me, I, I didn't it's like hearing important, it. Important though, because I think if people think they can just walk in, walk out after one hour or two hours or three hours, um, it, you know, it's an it, it's another story, really. Yeah. They might. I can remember. There. With, with you in particular, you, you know, what was going through my head when you were saying it's a process, not an event, was just tell me what to do and I'll do it. <laughs> You've got the answers. Just tell me what tell to me do and I will do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, and that's part of the whole therapy world, isn't it? Yeah. At allowing the client to have the opportunity to find their own truth. Yeah, and that's powerful, but it's also difficult at the same time. It's like you with a font of all knowledge, and it's like you know what's wrong, Bob. You know what I need to do. It's, it's Just tell really me. <laughs> difficult if you've been heavily defined and told what to do all your life. It's almost an impossibility to hold on to the concept of uh, you can, you know, take ownership of your own truth. Yeah, it's a. It, it, I do understand what you're talking about, Jackie, and that's part of therapy. Yeah, 100%. That's what, we do. Yeah. That's what we do behind closed doors, if you like. But no, I think we're also in the whole business of opening doors for clients mm. and allow them to step into the sun. Yeah. And being with them while they do that. Yeah. And exploring a new way of being. That, that's really powerful. And very transformational. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Bob. I really enjoyed this. No, I enjoy talking about this, and it reminds me of all the changes and all the um, therapy journeys I've been on over the many years, and I feel very privileged, really, that, mm. that people have allowed me to do this job, really. Yeah. Uh, it's a very humbling job that I've been involved in for such a long time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what we're going to be looking at next time is episode 71 next time, Bob. You wanted to get to 71 because it's how many years you've been on the Yeah, planet. and I came up with two titles just before, about an hour and a half ago. And one was, uh, what <laughs> I'm smiling because I, this is such an, such an interesting subject. You know, what? how do you work with difficult clients? Not to say, how, how do you work with clients you don't actually like? Yes. <laughs> That'll be a good one to do on 71. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And what was the other one I said? Did you write it down? Working with multiple personality disorder, working oh, yeah. with clients I with multiple. Because yeah. I specialised in that, and that's all, all about how you work with the fragmented parts of the self in order to help them, you know, integrate back again. So you've got that one and the other one, how, <laughs> which is how, how do you work with clients you actually don't like? That's what we're doing yeah. next time, Bob. I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's a really interesting discussion anyway. I think it's a good one to celebrate the amount of years that you've been on the planet as well. Yeah. Oh, great. And of course, you know, the real truth is, uh, for people listening to this, it, 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 in some ways it's quite easy. Easy, no, easy is a loaded word, but I'll just use it. And then no people know what I mean. But it's easier to work with people you get on with and you you warm to and your yeah. heart goes out to yeah yeah it's more challenging if you find those clients more difficult yeah and sometimes we don't know why that is yeah so it'd be a great podcaster yeah yeah we can explore seventh, that next time on my 71st do you say it's number 71 71 yeah oh, that, that'd be that's what i want to be to 71 in podcast because it symbolizes my age and it's a really good topic. So until next time, Bob. Yeah, thank you very much. Speak soon. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.